Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how I did this sketch for World Watercolor Month when the prompt was Wave. And this is also kind of a last ditch effort to um, try to like these watercolors before I did a review. I was really, um, I really didn't like this watercolor set. I really still don't, but um, I wanted to make sure I was giving it a fair shot. And so I wanted to do one more artwork with it to make sure that my, um, my opinions were sound. And I still don't like this paint, but I think it did an okay job here. And if you have this paint or other paint like it, because it's one of those paints that just gets rebranded and rebranded and rebranded. I believe it was originally by Simi Art, and I think they're the factory that sells it to all these other companies. This particular one is the Allegro set from Zen Art, and I think it's the same as Culture Hustle, and it is seems the same as the Artistro that I reviewed about a year ago. I don't love it, but I do realize if you're just using it in one layer, it actually does look pretty nice and luminous, but it's when you start layering up and adding more details Details that you start to get that little bit of a chalkiness to it. Um, my original intent was to use the white of the paper, and so I'm trying to just kind of spatter and stipple the blues in like the foam of the wave and just kind of leave the white of the paper, but um, I wasn't really liking the way it was looking as I went through this, uh, this process, so you will see I will bring in some uh, bleed-proof white. Um, I'm using a variety of blues here. I think I'm using all the blues from um, like that kind of sky blue color to Viridian just to get these uh, um, this range of blue green color here and I also wanted to have some like yellows and pinks in the rock to kind of really and oranges to kind of make the um the blue really pop against there I love to use the pink this is kind of a fuchsia color opera would work really well uh, because that's going to make the green glow a little bit and I was putting in some of a uh, raw sienna you could also use yellow ochre and I was mixing some of the ultramarine blue which I'd already used with some burnt umber just to give it um, a nice really dark shadow color and this is uh, actually pretty red oxide color in this paint set that I was using to um, bring in a little bit of um, a girth to the rocks, basically give it some weight and volume. And actually, I have to say, looking back at this, the paints don't seem as bad as they are. Um, so I just want to kind of preface that. Maybe I'm being too picky, but um, I really kind of struggled with these paints anytime I, I went to use them. But they're definitely better than nothing. If you already have them, I would say, you know, go ahead and use them. But I think they could maybe make learning how to paint harder than uh, than many others on the market. But actually at this stage, I kind of like the way it's looking. Maybe I was a little too hasty to add the white, but um, in real life, you know, sometimes things look better on video than they do in real life. And sometimes they look better in real life. But anyway, I was just like, uh, I'm not getting the um, spray feeling that I wanted. So I took some bleed proof white and put it in one of the wells on my palette and take, took a piece of deli paper and covered up the facing page of my sketchbook because I noticed I'd already gotten a few little spatters up there already. And then I'm using another piece of paper that I've torn just to be kind of like a mask so that my spray would go where I wanted it to. And I just um, recycle old toothbrushes for this. And before you're grossed out, I would run the toothbrushes through my dishwasher before I would use them for crafting purposes. But um, but I mean, they're plastic. Why recycle them? You can, you know, boil them if you want to. But uh, I love to use old toothbrushes for spattering and, uh, and different art effects like that. And they work great for like, even for oil paints, you can use them. Just, you know, make sure if you're spattering something, it's not something toxic that you don't want to inhale. Um, I like how I could get a, a more natural feeling of the water falling over the rocks with the gouache though. And that's really a look I was going for. Um, and again, anytime you see me put that paper down, I'm just protecting an area where I don't want a lot of spray. So I want it to appear that the, the waves were hitting the edge of the rocks and just kind of um, letting the like, kind of wave break at, on impact for that that further one. I love to just sit at the ocean and watch the waves come in and break. I live in Maine, so, and I'm in kind of mid-coast to uh, what a lot of people call northern. It's not really northern. It's fairly central, but it is, you know, more mid-coast, kind of closer to the Bar Harbor region. And I love to go out there and just watch the waves come in and break against the rocks because up in this area of the state, our beaches are very rocky. And I just, I could just sit there for hours and watch. And that's what I was getting, going for with this little flat brush that came in the kit. I was just trying to get those kind of like, um, oh, almost like spider webby effect of when you see the reflections and you see the shadows in the wave that those kind of ripples. That's what I was going for there. And I wasn't happy with the amount of movement I was getting. So I'm going back and I'm spattering with some of the blue to try to break up some of the white a bit and just find that balance that I want with this piece. I really wanted movement. I wanted you to feel the, um, the water, the rivulets of water just kind of 
cascading down the rocks and I also wanted to kind of feel the spray of the of the wet wave as it crashed against the rocks and just feel that kind of um, briny air I guess so I also want to have some uh, exciting colors so going in with that pink again around the white I think really helped kind of pump it up a little bit and um I have to say, I'm, I'm not too mad about this painting. This painting, I think, came out all right. I think I really want to do it larger with a better set of paints, probably my M. Graham paints. But I think as far as the study, this was pretty pretty successful. Now, in a couple areas, I wanted a smaller spray. So I just grabbed an oil painting brush and I picked it up with a gouache and just did kind of controlled sprays there where the wave, wave kind of like, um, not breaks, but kind of bends. And you've got like... Uh, you've got the kind of the corners of each of the breaks coming together. And then uh, I was really looking at this. I took the tape off and I was looking at it and saying, well, what does it need? And I was feeling that it needed more contrast. So I took the ultramarine blue and mixed it with that burnt umber again and made some dark shadows. And I'm just kind of adding those to some of the foreground rocks because I knew if I made things a little bit more sharp in the foreground, it would give me more depth. And that's what I felt like I was, I was really needing a little more contrast and a little more depth. And I also want to have a little bit of shadow under where those waves were breaking. So there would be a little more contrast between between the foam and the water itself. And uh, sometimes it's just those little finishing touches. You do have to be careful if you've taken your tape off not to get it in the border, but um, don't be afraid to go back in when you've taken your tape off. Sometimes it just needs a little bit of tweaking. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed this quick little time lapse and I hope you give something like this a try yourself. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.